Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This afternoon I'm looking at a book from the Child Poverty Action Group. It's one of their handbooks. We review a lot of their work. Uh, I think they are of a high quality, they're at a good price and they're extremely helpful for all the people who have really quite serious problems in social welfare law. And of course the problem is that most of them do not have very much money or access to very much by way of information. So these handbooks from CPAG are, are really um, special importance. They are normally available in libraries and they are available with citizens advice. But um, I do review a number of the handbooks purely and simply to tell you what is available, show you the book and how it might be used. So you've got a flavour for the huge amount of detail which is in um, these handbooks. What I've got today is Benefits for Migrants. It's the handbook for 20 to, uh, 20 to 2021. It's the 12th edition. It's been written by a number of people. I'll name them. Rebecca Walker, Kamia Adia Shah, uh, Ravi Lobeer, Ruth Mercer and Ori Krishna. I hope I've pronounced everyone's names uh, correctly. The Child Poverty Action Group are um, an important group, um, dear to my heart, because they do a lot of very valuable work. And I always like to um, give as much help to them as I can. The title, it's not a particularly brilliant title I've come up for our review, an important CA, um, CPAG handbook for the 2020s um, on migrants, which of course, I got the book a little early this year, I'm recording this in the autumn of 2021. We've had a very difficult summer with the end of the pandemic. Huge problems with migrants, obviously mainly centred around the English Channel. But we've also had the fall of the Afghan um, government in uh, Kabul. And therefore there are going to be a lot of changes facing Western Europe in particular um, in the future. And of course that's really where part of this book comes in. Now some people have a very different view about the role of uh, what we do with migrants. Uh, I'm not entering any political arguments here at all. What I'm saying is this is where you will get information to help you. That's what this book is about. The new 12th edition then of Benefits for Migrants um, came out in 2021 and it arrives at just the right time in my view for the period of change which we are facing in the UK as we enter the, what I'm going to call, I hope, touch wood, the, the COVID, the post-COVID pandemic era. Um, obviously we're getting to an end at the moment of it, but it's going to be with us for a long time. However, we've still got to get on with our lives. Um, the book has firmly established itself, in my view, this particular handbook, um, as the leading text on social security entitlement for people who have come to or who are leaving the United Kingdom. Now I say that because it's about people specifically the benefits for migrants. Now let's have a look at the book. It's a paperback. It's a big book. There's the front, there's the spine and then there's the back. Now you can see there's a shaded area. The shaded area is the various chapters. You probably can't see them too well there. And then at the back are the appendices. And if I go to the back of the book you'll see there is a very detailed index by page numbering. Now if we go to the front of the book, there's the front page there, then you've got uh, detail about um, the Child Poverty Action Group, uh, information about the authors there and what they, what they do, then some acknowledgements which I'll refer to in a few minutes, then a content section split into all the various parts, quite a large number of parts all the way through, then what you've got is a very useful abbreviation section. Then the introduction. Now the introduction starts off as virtually all of the handbooks do with how to use this book. Now, if you are using this book, do read this chapter because it tells you where to find things. What you've got is you've got a short little index for each chapter heading. And then you can see all of the headings, finding the relevant law, immigration advice, and then we go straight into the next chapter, which is immigration law. Again, you see the same same thing. You've got a mini index for the chapter and you've got obviously you've got chapter numbers or sort of para numbers almost for the bits that make up the chapter. And um, 
you do of course at the end of each chapter and if I can just show you that here you have a notes section so the footnotes which you would have in another publication are actually in the back of each chapter there and that's the detail which refers specifically to regulations acts of parliament and so forth and without going into a great deal of detail that's where you should be able to, to find something that may help you with your problem obviously the uh, the details of each of the um, chapters looks very much at immigration status, asylum seekers, human rights, a whole range of very important issues which I can only skim over in this particular review. What I will do is just show you the appendix at the back. What you have got, which is sometimes it's at the front, but in this book it's a glossary of terms very useful because it's going to be a problem for a lot of people to try and understand some, what some of the words uh, mean and also of course if you are not um, if English is not your first language you are also going to have quite considerable problems but following the end of the post Brexit transition period which took place up to the 31st of December 2020 and that's nearly a year ago now new rules took effect from the 1st of January 2021. That's why this book is so important, because it's obviously looking at the new regime. It significantly changes the benefit entitlements of migrants. And the publication, therefore, of the 12th edition of the handbook is very useful because it ensures advisors get the latest information on these changes. And, of course, the ending of the European free movement rights within uh, the United Kingdom and its laws affects the benefit entitlement of European nationals who began living in the UK before the end of 2020, that's the end of the transition period, and those who arrived after, and the family members of both groups. And as I record this, we are beginning to see the after effects of Brexit. I'm not a supporter of Brexit, and I never have been, but I'm, I do have to recognise what is happening and try to advise accordingly. Now, the position at the moment is that we are seeing a different type of problem developing with the uh, job market in the United Kingdom, with vacancies which had hitherto been filled by people from Europe. And, of course, obviously there are people coming into this country as migrants who are um, very experienced people. What the guide does here is it reviews the details of the changes which have taken place, including how they operate alongside European Union settlement schemes. And of course, the groups with protections that mean, of course, that they can continue to use free movement rights to access benefits. And that's, that's a key point as part of the, uh, the longer term as Britain re-establishes itself in a post-Brexit um, world. And of course, the end of the transition period, which is nearly a year ago now, also affected the benefit entitlements of claimants who moved to live in Europe. So those are people going out. And of course, Benefits for Migrants as a handbook covers these changes together with other rules on when and for how long a claimant can continue to receive benefits whilst abroad. Again, I think that's quite important. It also covers the rules concerning British citizens and others <coughs> excuse me, who return to the UK after living abroad. Again, <coughs> excuse me, there have been some problems because obviously with the pandemic, there's been a very, very strict limitation on movement. And that is beginning to start changing now, both in terms of holiday and employment. The information that we get from the authors will help you, I think, establish the immigration status of your clients. Obviously, you're the you advisor using this book. Uh, they will provide, of course, in addition, uh, comprehensive details on the benefit entitlements that result from that status, including, of course, specific rules that apply to refugees and others granted leave following an asylum claim. That's covered at the beginning of the handbook. And again, it's quite important because of, again, the very large number of people who've come over from uh, France on the, um, on the boats in the English Channel. Now, for those with outstanding asylum and claims, um, the handbook provides detailed information on the asylum support system, as well as the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on those claiming rights. Now, I think that's important because we're still, I think, 
gingerly moving forward to see where we're going to be in a in the next um, certainly the next six months to a year because no one really knows whether we're going to have a pandemic coming back but we are assuming that things will get back onto a more level uh, keel as it were now what the book gives you which is standard house style for the child poverty action group are step-by-step -step, um, points in saying guides for the advisor and examples to make the information easier to use. It offers tactics to help enforce your client's rights and chapters on dealing with practical problems such as delays and providing evidence. All of those points are really quite important uh, because again um, it's really a complex um, process and it's the handbook itself is fully indexed and uh, cross-referenced for both United Kingdom and European Union legislation and case law. And of course the handbook should also, in our view, be on the desk of every uh, person advising European and non-European nationals living in the United Kingdom at the moment and claimants of all nationalities who have recently arrived in the UK or who are going abroad. Remember, it does work the other way. Now I say that because this is an emotional area for a lot of people. A lot of people don't like migrants, they don't like what's going on at all. But the fact is, we have to deal with that problem as advisors. And it's not a question of making a view known about it, it's trying to help the people who need assistance. The date of publication of this new book is cited at the 15th of February 2021, recording it much later in the year. The law is correct as at the 1st of March 2021, and that includes regulations and uh, laid and, re and judgments deliver, uh, delivered up to that date. So that means that it's, it's relatively recent, and of course we'll have to see what happens in the next year or so. One last look at the book, there it is again, front, spine and back, and if I, I'll open it in the middle. European Union Coordination Rules, Chapter 16. The principles of coordination. You, you can see again what you've got here. Uh, you've got a, a large, you've actually got quite a large amount of information. That's really a, um, a sort of standard uh, schedule which sets out the various things you can do. Um, and it also talks about which benefits are covered and so forth. You should have here everything that you need. And I'd like to just conclude by saying thank you to the Child Poverty Action Group. Uh, these books are very important, um, they are not expensive and they do make our lives so much easier. This is not an easy area <coughs> and a lot of people uh, that I've come across really have not got a great deal of knowledge of this. But unfortunately it's like a lot of stuff we have today as lawyers. It is so complex and it's been made I think additionally um, complex. It's not needed, it should be simplified. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to see what you can get by way of benefit from the book. And I hope I've set it out for you. So a big thank you to everybody and good luck. Bye bye.